So even the Japanese government says we will not be able to develop a fast breeder reactor at least by 2050. That's another 40 years. You know, we, we spent 2 trillion yen, we spent 50 years, and the first breeder reactor will not be ready for the next 40 years. So we are questioning, should we continue this development of fast breeder reactor? That's number one issue. And then by now, Japan has asked UK and France to reprocess spent fuel. And uh, we have now more than 30 tons of plutonium. We were supposed to burn that in the first breeder reactor, but the first breeder reactor will not be ready for another 40 years. So what are we going to do with this 30 tons of plutonium? And then Japan is not able to find a place for the position of nuclear waste. And so this nuclear fuel cycle is not going anywhere. And we spent another two trillion yen to reprocess. So we we built a reprocessing plant, and it's not it's not working. It's not working properly. So what's Japan going to do with its radioactive waste? Tons and tons and tons of it. How much have you got? Well, too many. Um, we were we were still uh, looking for a place to, you know, bury it underground, and we are not able to find it. So I think we have to, I don't know, keep it as a spent fuel for many, many years to come. And uh, I think we need to start testing dry cask for spent fuel. I think our cooling pool for the spent fuel is almost full. Uh, Some reactor will will only last for another two, three years before the cooling pool is filled up. So all the nuclear reactors in Japan are facing the spent fuel issues. Uh, Average five to six years, then they would have their cooling pool filled up completely. What are we going to do after that? Um, no one's sure. You know, Japan sitting on 30 tons of plutonium worries the hell mm-hmm. out of me because <laughs> you only yep. need five pounds or so to make a nuclear weapon, and mm-hmm. Japan is very far advanced technologically speaking, and the truth is within a several weeks, if Japan so decided, it could make nuclear weapons. Does that thought worry you, Kono Taro? Well, um... I don't. I don't think we would we would do the nuclear weapons. I mean, we have no place to test the nuclear weapons. No. So we not. I'm not worried about that. I mean, you know, people people uh, often you know start talking about what if Japan decided to build a nuclear weapon? So, well, that's not going to happen. So I'm not really worried about it. What worries me is uh, Japan's very strict uh, gun control and uh, those. Girls who's guarding the plutonium don't carry guns. So if the terrorist decided to take over the plutonium, um, I don't know if we are properly uh, properly uh, situated. And there's no anti-terrorist measures at, uh, for the spent fuel pool. That's now obvious today. Mm. So we have a lot to worry. How are we going to defend those, not only the nuclear reactors? I mean, terrorists don't have to shoot a missile against the nuclear reactors. All they have to do is just to cut the power yep. supply. Yep. <laughs> so and then you we, get a Fukushima. We, we have to, right. We have to increase a lot of anti-terrorist measures to protect the uh, nuclear power plants. And we are not really ready yet. The other thing is that, of course, medically, plutonium is so terribly dangerous that uh-huh. one, pa- one pound, hypothetically, if evenly distributed, could give most people on Earth lung cancer. You know, one millionth mm-hmm. of a gram or 10 to the minus 9 grams is carcinogenic. Mm-hmm. So we need to take that into account, number one. And number two, its half-life is 24,400 years. So it lasts for a quarter of a million years. And, you know, when you think Japan's sitting on 30 tonnes of this stuff and you've got more mm-hmm. 
to develop if you reprocess your spent fuel in France and the like. It's really crazy, isn't it? Yeah, uh, I mean, we have a thousand times more plutonium than the North Korea. <laughs> we are now worried about North Korea's nuclear program, and we try to have a six-body talk, and yes. we, we try to pressure them with economic sanction. And Japan sitting next to North Korea with, you know, about a thousand times more plutonium. It kind of sounds crazy. It's ironic. Now, <laughs> <laughs> Kono Taro... Um, is a member of the Liberal Democratic Party in the Japanese state. Um, I want you to talk about the accord that Japan developed after the war with America to say that Japan would never be involved in war again and it would not store nuclear weapons on its territory. Tell me how that was violated, uh, Kono Taro. Um, it, was, it was not an accord. It was the Japanese... Uh, cabinet uh, decisions not to develop a nuclear weapon, yeah. uh, not to hold a nuclear weapon, and not allow to not allow anyone to bring in a nuclear weapon. Yes, and that was the government policy. Yes, but uh, when we let the U.S. Navy come to our port, the American government policy. It, was uh, they won't tell you if there's a nuclear weapon on the ship or not. They will not confirm or deny. So, <laughs> logically speaking, the Japanese government wouldn't know if there's a nuclear weapon on the American ship or not. So this three nuclear policy of the Japanese government uh, logically cannot be confirmed because we wouldn't know if the American Navy have uh, brought the nuclear weapon into Japan or not. So the government, the government has an uh, agreement with the United States. If the United States is to bring the nuclear weapon into Japan, they would consult in advance with the Japanese government. So the Japanese government were telling the general public in Japan, uh, we have never consulted uh, from the United States government. That means they have not brought in nuclear weapons. So no one's sure. Uh, and uh, I think that that's the only thing the Japanese government could tell the Japanese government. So we, we, we do not know, but there are many uh, Navy, American Navy people who said in the public hearing or statement that they have uh, their ship had a nuclear weapon on it and they came to a Japanese port. Of course. Um, you know, I'm sure their aircraft carriers ca come in and they carry nuclear weapons and other of their attack uh, uh, cruisers carry nuclear weapons too. Do, how does the Japanese government feel about Okinawa and that huge... American military presence there. Um, the people in Okinawa really hate them being there. What, what, what is the attitude of the Japanese government, and can't you get rid of the Americans? Well, it is more important to have American base in Okinawa as China expand its navy. I mean, China, China's defense budget been increasing more than double-digit growth for last. 20 some years. And uh, it is very important to have uh, Marine Air Force in Okinawa. The problem is uh, some of the Okinawans are uh, not happy with the situation of the American bases. So, and we have a, a Marine Airfield uh, in Okinawa, and now the city has been developed around the base. So it is not a safe to operate the helicopter out of that airfield. So in order to avoid uh, any dangerous accident, Japanese government and American government want to relocate the airfield in the middle of the city to somewhere safe. We are trying to build another airfield in one of the American base in Okinawa. 
And, uh, well, we, we have got a basic agreement of Okinawans from governors, mayors, and then the DPJ Prime Minister Hatoyama came in, and without thinking anything, he said, oh, let's move this base out of Okinawa. And six months later, later he came back. Oh, sorry, we couldn't do this. So because of pressure from the, uh, a pressure from the Americans, I'm sure. Uh, well, he didn't really thought about the defending Japan against the Chinese na- naval expansion. But and is when he, he was questioned, um, couldn't find it any, anywhere else. So he came back to Okinawa. Sorry, I should have thought about it before. So, but is, so is Japan really worried about China? I mean, really, oh, yes. honestly, Kono, I know uh-huh. you yes. suffered terribly during, you know... No, you were, you were very bad to the Chinese during the Second World War. They, they should be scared of you. Oh, that has nothing to do with the current uh, issues. The Chinese naval expansion is a serious issue. See, uh, South China Sea, they are trying to dominate the sea lanes. And the international society are not a, well, we, we can't allow that to happen. So it is important to check China's military expansion. And the bases in Okinawa is very important doing it. Mm. It really worries me because America's increasing its presence now in the Pacific and also in oh, yes. Australia. Yes. Um, and I don't think America has a right to, you know, be have a big presence there because it belongs to Asia. I, I'm very worried because America still has all those nuclear weapons and you can't dissociate the American military from its nuclear weapons and policy and, and they've said if necessary they'll use them. I, and I don't... I don't see, maybe I'm wrong, but I don't see China at the moment as being very aggressive militarily. Am I wrong? Well, even the Australia's Labour Prime Minister, Kevin Rudd, when he came to Japan, he talked about uh, worry over China's military expansion. And I believe the Australia is expanding the defence uh, yeah, but we're wrong. Isn't it? We're we're crazy. I mean, all we are uh, are the fifty first state of the United States of America. We're sycophants to the U.S. Um, we've got a pathetic prime minister who knows nothing about foreign policy, and I wouldn't trust Kevin Rudd. Um, and so, uh, even if Australia, you know, goes along with that, I do not agree with it as an Australian, and I also worry all the time with the nuclear weapons still you know, having a huge presence in the American military, that there could be an accidental nuclear war or, or, or as the military tensions build up, there could be a nuclear war. You know, I, I can't... We, we've got to stop, I think, thinking and acting as if war is inevitable because if we keep fighting and we keep setting up military presences, inevitably... In the future, I think inevitably there will be a nuclear war and then there'll be no life left on the planet. We, You know, see, Kono, in, in the nuclear age, things have changed. And although men think they can keep fighting and have their military presence, the truth is, um, it's really what Einstein said, the splitting of the atom, like nuclear weapons, changed everything, all reality, except the way man thinks in military terms, thus we drift towards unparalleled catastrophe. And if anyone should understand that, it should be the Japanese having suffered from Hiroshima and Nagasaki.